It's that time again, when I document years of my family's exciting adventures in a few minutes of video. And now, the wonders of 2020 and 21. In January of 2020, we had our van hover converted and equipped with a hyperdrive for our first trip to space, where we made lots of new friends and saw amazing sights like the asteroid belt. Master Super Goat taught me in the ways of the Force, and I got pretty good at levitating rocks. Unfortunately, Araya turned to the light side, so I had no choice but to battle her. In February, Teresa produced her version of Moliere's classic comedy, The Imaginary Invalid, which pokes fun at hypochondria. This was a month before hypochondria became the new normal. In March, we boarded a train and a plane, arriving in Florida, where we visited family, enjoyed the beaches, and explored museums. From there, we boarded a cruise ship set for the Caribbean. On board, we enjoyed fine dining with family, dancing, recreation, and entertainment. Oh, and we totally won the egg drop contest. The ship landed in Cozumel, Mexico, where we took in the wonders of the ancient Mayans. When we stepped off the ship, we learned that the world had declared a pandemic, and we got off just before other ships were detained. After that, naturally, we went to Legoland, where the lines were next to non-existent. It was awesome. Though it shut down the next day. Our trip ended at the Kennedy Space Center, which also shut down the next day and we made it back to the Salt Lake Airport just hours before it shut down. Around this time, I published my first picture book, which was adapted from a former award-winning story told by Aspen. The eagle screeched her consternation of being duped. I, being well-educated in eagleology, screeched back. For those of you who aren't familiar with the eagle language, that means, I'm sorry to have deceived you, but I felt it necessary to conduct a proper interview. In April, I hosted a virtual play festival called Six Feet Apart, which featured two of my plays and one of Teresa's. In May, my family performed some of our award-winning tall tales at the Story Crossroads Festival. I totally beat my dad in the fight. That totally became the champion of the universe. Before I indulge in high fructose corn syrup and partially hydrogenated soybean oil, I think of George and listen to my conscience because I really don't want to end up with wooden teeth. In June, we sold our house of eight years and took the plunge into self-employment to help us realize our creative dreams. This was also when our cat, Misty, had five kittens. It's what happens when pandemics close spay and neuter clinics. In July, we teamed up with my former parkour instructor to create Super Bowser Parkour, just cuz. I played Evil Mario, Teresa played Peach, and our kids were the Toads. So far, it's only had 50,000 views on YouTube. Come on, people. In August, our kittens gained international fame as they competed in WWC World Wrestling Cats, featuring some of the most ferocious predators in the feline world, ready to go head to head in the battle for glory. The fangs, the claws, the primal instinct. These elite competitors will face four intense challenges for the ultimate prize, a mountain of cat food. In September, we decided to start our own theater company. We planned out an entire year of productions, including a few shows that didn't exist yet, and got really busy. We've been busy since. In October, we premiered our first production of Take My Death Away, a Halloween musical, Teresa's long-standing passion project, for which I helped a little. When you write a play like this, you have a vague idea of what the characters will look and sound like, but to actually see them take on real faces and real voices and personalities that you never imagined is just so much fun. There's a lot of great moments in it. There's some pretty funny humorous parts and there's some pretty dramatic parts. Brilliant. It is absolutely brilliant. Yeah. And the music is so fun and the storyline is phenomenal. And It's powerful. It is. It's nothing like I've ever seen before or heard or been a part of. and. For me, it's been life-changing. After all that work, we needed something relaxing to do. So we hiked Arches National Park. 
In December, we threw a Jane Austen-themed murder mystery dinner party at a bed and breakfast hotel. Again, just cuz. In January of 2021, we started our totally awesome youth theater program. We must go and conquer on a distant shore. Guide us in battle, you met us for. We'll go to Valhalla. We'll go to Valhalla. We'll do magic hammer, throw your mighty spear. Give us your strength and cause them to fear. In February, I was hard at work recording the album for our upcoming musical, one of four albums I'd record this year. Not including the music I composed for Scripture Explorers. Land of the South. A million lies spewed out of his mouth A Malachiya was a liar For Valentine's Day, we teamed up with friends to throw a 1920s-themed dance. Because we could. March marked the second full-scale production of my musical, Bums. This is a show that you don't want to miss. It's super fun. The music is fantastic. The dancing, it's amazing. It is so funny. A really high energy production. I'm certain you're gonna laugh. It is just such a fun, exciting show. The songs are so catchy. Just a lot of catchy tunes that you just don't hear anymore. Really good music and fantastic actors. In April, I hosted the 11th annual Utah's Biggest Liar Tall Tale Contest. Cause why not? Then, for no reason, we hiked Zion National Park. In May, and every other month of the year, the kids spend a lot of time at forest school, which is better than actual school. Then there was all the times we went kayaking. June marked the second full-scale production of my musical Valhalla, which was beyond awesome. It's been humbling to work with so many ridiculously talented people who helped bring my vision to life. June was also when we celebrated Uncle Brian's wedding. And hiked arches again. In July, we competed in the Freedom Run, as usual, and Therese and I started taking ballroom dance lessons. In August, we premiered a brand new musical, The Lady of Sherwood. Pumping out the script, the music, and the production on top of everything else we had going on proved to be crazy, yet rewarding. My rule of thumb? The more ambitious the deadline, the more the magic. Again, it was wonderful to work with so many talented people who helped us make dreams into reality. Then, needing another break, we spent a few thousand calories hiking Capitol Reef National Park. In September, after a 12-year battle with Parkinson's disease, my dear old dad merged with the infinite. Thanks for everything, dad. We'll see you soon enough. October marked our second production of Take My Death Away, this time set near a Louisiana bayou. Almost every night sold out. Teresa rocked it as Christine Daae, I mean Sadie. October was also when I hosted our annual hauntings, scary storytelling contest, for the second time, and when the kids and I stole away to Lagoon for strictly business purposes. In November, Teresa and I escaped to Park City for an early celebration of 15 years of marriage. It's been crazy fun. In December, we debuted yet another brand new musical, A Krampus Carol. Two nights before Christmas, in an Austrian cabin, were children so naughty you can barely imagine. Seven plus one through winter so bitter were watched day and night by a staunch babysitter. While parents were having such wonderful times without ever knowing their little one's crimes. Pride and vainglory with envy so green, 
gluttonous eating, and wrath tough and mean. Greed so demanding, with lustful desire. Slothful and lazy, all geared for the fire. Little they knew through the wintry storm, their lives were about to forever transform. For Krampus, the demon of holiday lore, was coming to scare them as never before. Not only is it a fun Christmas show, but it's unique. Great music. Children are hands grow naughtier each year. It's only a matter of time till Krampus appears. Krampus, Christmas carols, save us all from heaven. It feels like an instant classic. It's a show that I can see a lot of people wanting to do in the future. I think it'll be a great new holiday tradition. And so the journey continues until the fateful day when we all become Force Ghosts. Thanks to the many people who have helped us bring our dreams to life. It turns out that when you seize the day and don't let other people tell you what you can and cannot do, life is amazing. And as they say, I'm